Hello everyone and welcome to another Zeitz Mocha online open studio. It's lovely to have you with us today joining us for this session. My name is Liesl Hartman and I work in the Center for Arts Education at the Museum. This is a museum of contemporary art in Africa and it is located in Cape Town in South Africa. Before lockdown, we invited our guests and visitors into our Center for Arts Education to participate in practical activities inspired by the artists that we have on exhibition in the museum. We are doing these sessions now online. Some of them have been filmed in our homes. Today, we are very happy to be filming back in the Center for Arts Education in the museum today. I want to say thank you to Mandisa, who is behind the camera and helping me with this activity. I hope that you're going to have lots of fun learning about our artists and participating in this activity with us. Today, we are very happy to introduce a new artist that will inspire our activity today. Her name is Njideka Akunyele Crosby. Njideka is a visual artist who was born in Nigeria. She moved to America when she was 16 to complete her studies and she lives in Los Angeles in California at the moment. Njadeka's work is really about her thoughts, her feelings, her memories, her experiences and perceptions of the two homes which she has had, her home in Nigeria, her birthplace, and her current home in America. Right guys, so what I would like to do today is to speak to you first about the medium and the technique that Njideka uses in her work. And she makes these wonderful mixed media paintings and collages and into it she adds photo transfers. She takes images from photographic uh, photos and magazines and other images of these two places, Nigeria and America, and she combines them into the work together. So what you're seeing at the moment is my little example that's been inspired by the way in which she works. We're not able to do photo transfers in this activity in the same way that she does, but I've added some photographic material and photo montage technique, which I'll speak to you about a little bit later. I've included it with bits of painting, there are bits of collage in the background, and I've also done a little bit of rubbing that I've added into the piece as well. Um, I've used pencil to create layers of texture and color over some of the collaged elements. And Hinda Jekka's work works a little bit in that way, where she creates layers of images, one on top of the other, to make a really interesting image. Right, guys, so we've looked at this image a little bit um, more closely, and you can see that there are lots of different materials that you're going to need to make this image. And Jacob focuses on looking at pictures of interiors and domestic scenes, and we're going to talk about that um, as we start making the picture a little bit more. We're going to focus on the theme of your home and images and elements that remind you of your home. But let's look at the materials first. So I'm going to put that down. You're going to need two pieces of A4 paper, okay? I've just got pieces of newsprint. You can use any white paper or even a colored sheet of paper. It doesn't matter. You're going to need a couple of magazines um, that we're going to flip through later on to find images that we can use for our picture. You're going to need a pair of scissors. Very importantly, our glue stick, uh, which we often use. You can scrounge around your home and look for pictures um, that you want to play with. Um, these are pictures of from my childhood, of, of, of children that I knew as I was growing up. So maybe if you want to go to the family album and go and look for some pictures that you are happy to incorporate into your artwork and maybe cut up. I've also got a cokey, I've got a pencil, a little bit of watercolor paint, um, and you'll need some brushes and some water for that. And you may need some crayons as well to do that rubbing. So I've just got a wax crayon here to do the rubbing, but you can also do your rubbings as I've done in this piece. I just used a pencil. So collect your materials together and then we are ready to start our activity. Right guys, so when we make images of an inside scene or an interior, the way in the Jekka uh, does. We want to create an impression of a floor and a wall 
and objects standing in that space. And if you look at this picture here, we can see that the line of where the wall meets the floor actually travels up in a diagonal. That helps us to lead the eye in and to give the illusion of that three-dimensional space. So what I want to do first is I want to help us to create a composition or a framework for us to put all of our objects in and create that illusion of an interior space. And I'm going to do it really simply without having to draw a complicated picture. And we're going to use a folding technique uh, to help us this time. Um, so with our two pieces of paper, you put the one on top of the other and I will explain why we need two in a minute. And we want to create our floor area first, and it depends how deep you want your floor area to be, okay? Um, it can be narrow, it can be wider, it just depends on what you want to create. So in this image here, here's my floor, okay, my wall and the side wall. So we can create folding to help us to create that interior scene. You could have your room the other way around. You could have the floor coming in from the left hand side, the wall in the background and the side wall there. And you could also do a version where you're creating two walls and a back wall to give you that sort of cube-like interiors with the floor in the middle coming in from both ends. So let me show you how to do that with folding. I'm just going to do the one side like these. So we take our two sheets, one on top of the other, like, I, like I've explained, and we're going to fold up for the floor first. Try and keep the points nicely together. Don't let your page shift. So I'm folding my sheet up on a nice straight line and I create that fold there. Now I want to create the side wall, that's our floor area, and I bring that in from the side. And then I want to create the line where the floor meets the wall on the side, and we're going to do that by folding. So where this section meets that there, I'm just going to make a little dot so that you can see it, and a dot on the corner. And we're going to take our piece of paper and we're going to fold it from the one dot. We're going to create a line to the other. Can you see it doesn't make a triangle? It makes a sort of a strange triangle that way. So don't try and create an, uh, a straight triangle against the edge. Okay? Right. So once you've got that bottom fold, the side fold, and your diagonal fold, then you can unfold your paper. Okay? So depending on whether you want your room coming in from that side or the other side, you can flip your pieces of paper around. And I'm going to now show you how to create the wall and the floor. So on that line from the top down until it meets the crossroads there, across your floor area, so that's your one wall. And then to create that interior space, we create a diagonal line so there's your floor area, your wall, and your other wall on the other side. If you wanted to use and make a picture facing the other way, then you could just flip your piece of paper around and do it the exact same thing this time. Your wall will be on the right-hand side, your bigger wall on this side, and your diagonal there. So that would be your floor, your wall, and your wall depends on what you would like to do. But both pieces of paper have exactly the same folds. So take your koki and do it with your other sheet as well. Because you're going to need that sheet to guide you a little bit later on. So there are your two pieces of paper and your interior is created from your simple lines. Now for the next step of our process that we've created our interior space with just simple lines, we're now going to focus on our theme of home. 
Inspired by the artist Ndjeka Akunyile Crosby, who looks at her two homes, the one where she grew up in Nigeria and America, and brought those memories, those thoughts, those perceptions of both of those spaces together in her work, we are also going to create an artwork which is about our feelings, our thoughts, our memories about our own space. And we've been spending a lot of time in our homes at the moment, um, so hopefully there are going to be some interesting thoughts about that and things that you want to include in your picture. Picture. So I thought an interesting first step uh, for this is to think about the kinds of colors and the kinds of textures that you think about when you think about your home. Maybe you have been lucky to have more than one home and spend your time in different homes. Maybe you've moved from one city or from a town to another, and so you've lived in different spaces. Maybe you have a home where you go on holiday, so you have different images of homes in your head, okay? So I'm going to show you the start of my picture where we're going to create a collaged background, and we're just going to be thinking about our feelings, our thoughts, about that space in terms of the colors that it reminds us of and the textures. So I've taken one of my magazines, guys, and I've selected some colors which I associate, one of the colors that I associate, or a couple of colors that I associate with home. And I've started on my page here. You will start on your one background that you've created. Don't worry about going over the lines. We're going to deal with that in a minute. So let me take those two pieces of paper out the way, bring my piece that I've started here, which is my A4 sheet. I've already started sticking down some of my papers and I'm going to complete my collage by adding the other, the other pieces of paper onto that. So you can see that in this collage I've chosen a lot of pink and dark pink. That for me is my association with one of the rooms in my home. You may have different feelings and thoughts. I created another collage here where I added textures of food and of objects which also remind me about other aspects of my home, some stones and some colors um, from the garden outside which also inspires me. So your collages could be very different. They could have light and dark colors. They could have lots of the same color. It's really up to you. To do. What I also collected, which was quite interesting, is I went into the cupboard, um, the food cupboard, and I collected some of the covers of the, t the tins, um, because for me they are also very strong ideas about my home in terms of the food that we share in the kitchen and what happens in that space as well. So you can even look at the labels from food cans, any of those things uh, you can create collage with. Okay, so let me finish my sheet here. I've got a little bit of glue and I'm just going to stick my leftover pieces. And the idea is that we want to cover the entire background. So we don't want to see any of that newsprint and those lines which we drew will also disappear, which is fine. And I'll explain why in a couple of minutes. When you stick your pieces down, don't just put a piece of glue in the middle. Make sure your glue goes right to the end so that your pieces stick down really well and that they don't flap up on the end. So when you paste them down, you can see here I had an uneven piece of paper and then I went right over the edge and afterwards we will trim those edges off uh, very nicely. I'm going to add another color here. until I've covered my entire background. And we don't necessarily want images in the background, but you can have them if you like. I'm just choosing to be inspired by colors and textures. So 
sometimes you have some words and some lettering coming through which can also be interesting And now just to deal with our uneven edges, we flip our piece of paper around and we just cut those bits that are sticking out off. We just neaten our edges. So it's fine to paste your collage elements over the edge. And that gives us a beautiful collaged background. Right guys, so now we have finished the first layer really of our artwork that we are making and now we're going to start building that image of this interior scene based on elements of our home. I'm going to bring back the second sheet of paper uh, that we did because this is going to help us now to position some of the new elements. So one of the things which I thought would be nice to add into this artwork is to add what we call a rubbing. I went around my house when I did this image and I went and looked for, let's get those out of the way, interesting surfaces in the home that I liked and I took a rubbing from it. So I used pencil in this example here and but you can also use a wax crayon. So just to show you that you can actually put a piece of paper against any interesting surface with raised texture on it to get this rubbing or what we sometimes call frottage. And I've literally just taken the texture from this chair and with the black crayon, rubbing over it gives me a lovely of striped patterning and it picks that up in on that piece of paper just with the wax crown. Now Ndjeka's work is often layered with quite um, interesting black and white elements and things that look like photocopied material. So I also thought that the rubbing reminded me a little bit of that same textural quality in her work and it brings in another element from home that is slightly different than just drawing pictures. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our template, the second piece of paper, and we are going to cut on those lines that we created. And I would like to create a different floor texture to my wall area. So what I'm doing with this is I'm literally positioning it over that area of my rubbing. You can just hold the paper and cut. I'm going to draw a line just to help us so that we don't lose our way. So I'm just drawing the line of our template onto the rubbing. And I'm going to cut it out. And this is going to be our floor texture of our interior space. So what we're going to do there is we're going to take that and we are going to paste that in. So let's take our glue, again cover the edges with the glue quite thoroughly. Don't just put a blob of glue in the center of the piece of paper and you're going to stick it down. Now you're probably looking at this and saying to yourself yes but you haven't covered those edges very nicely but we have some extra bits of paper here which are quite nice. So we don't waste anything, we just use these extra bits and we can paste them into our work that we have there. And again remember that you don't have to worry about going over the edges because we can go and trim our edges 
with a scissor again. So I'll just stick this one over. Like that. Goes over the edge there. We turn it around. And we cut it off. So that's our floor area that we've got positioned. And now we want to create our two wall areas because you can see at the moment there's no line there. And so both of those areas look fairly similar and we want them to look slightly different. So we take a cokey pen. You can use an oil pastel if you like, if that works better on the magazine paper for you. And we're going to add that line in to create the wall area of our interior space. Right, so we have a beautiful floor which we've rubbed from a surface in our home. What I would like to do is just to differentiate those two walls slightly because at the moment it looks like it's all on one level and we want them to look a little bit more three-dimensional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of my watercolor paint. You can use a little bit of oil pastel if you like and shade it with oil pastel or you could even use a pencil. I'm going to use pencil on the one side. And just to flatten that space out a little bit and you'll see that your that your magazine paper is a little bit shiny so the, the watercolor will seem like it's pulling off a little bit and creating a texture in itself, which is quite interesting. I just keep rubbing the paint until it rubs dry. So you can do that with a color and immediately it just pushes that color back a little bit more. Just with a little bit of watercolor paint. I'm going to let that dry and then maybe give it a second layer. And on the other side, using a pencil, this will take a little bit longer. Um, you're just going to shade that other wall area in. Now you can, to sort of help the eye to move in, you can actually do that shading with diagonal lines. Depending on the pencil that you've got, you may have to press a little bit harder to get that gray to come through and also your shiny paper of your magazine may resist the pencil a little bit initially but just keep going this is why we want the pieces to be stuck down really well so let me just go back and stick that down again so that it doesn't flap up when we're doing things like using pencil or paint over it and I'm just going to cover my entire section with pencil and if your bits are stuck down really well then they shouldn't lift off they may catch a little bit on the ends just take care You can go over, you can do second, even third layers. The more layers you do, the more the pencil will take to the piece of paper. Right. To go over that blue line a little bit so that it's not so blue. And to make it blend in slightly. Now that that paint's a little bit dry, I'm going to go over with a second layer of paint. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to the one side to give it a little bit of a darker tone. It's mixing with that pink paint a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to the pink paint and give it a lovely second layer. And we just blend everything in. And you really are working up the layers of this image. And giving it a very interesting textural surface as well. 
And there we go. Right, so now we have our interior space with a floor, a back wall, and a side wall. And now we're going to start adding some interesting domestic elements to our picture. Now that we have prepared our background space and our interior to fill in with all of our domestic elements, now you're going to go to your magazines that you have and you're going to flip through your magazines and look for things that remind you of some of the things about home. So you can look for pieces of furniture, you can look for objects, you can even look for indoor plants, things like that that we can cut out and add to our picture um, and create this domestic scene. Now, the important thing about this step is to understand the difference between sticking in just collaged elements like we did before with our pieces of paper, which are really just torn pieces of paper which we stick in, and what we call photomontage elements. So this is where we look for images like, for example, here is a bed that I've cut out, okay, and that we place into the picture so that it feels like it actually belongs in that space. Now, how did we achieve that, okay? I'm going to demonstrate on this piece here. Here is a beautiful image of a chair which I may want to add into my picture. So if I was doing collage, okay, purely collage, I would simply take that picture, tear it out, carefully so that we don't tear through it. And I would stick it into my picture. That would be collaging. But the thing is that that doesn't really look like it fits and belongs in the space in the same way as that which is the image of a bed. And the difference here is, and I know that you can see this, is that we've taken that image and we've cut it out really, really carefully on the edge so that none of the background area remains in that picture. So we're going to do the same with this chair, okay? Um, and here you may want your mom and dad or an adult in the house to help you with cutting or an older sister or a brother perhaps. If you can't do this by yourself, it's just careful cutting right on the line of that object until you've gone all the way around and you've cut out the background of that picture. And all you are left with is the piece of furniture. This chair's got very thin legs, so we want to be very careful about that when we do it, okay? You may even want to take those legs off and create your own interesting couch without legs. So there you can take a bit of what we call artistic license and be creative about that, but I'll keep the legs in for this one. All right, and these are very thin legs, so you have to just watch out that you don't cut through them. Okay, there's still a little bit of an edge on there, so I'm going to cut it away nicely. Okay, and so there we have our chair, which fits very beautifully into that picture. Now you can find different images that you like, and you can position them uh, in ways that you like. I'll put my bed there, my chair on the side. Um, I've got another image of a chair here, which I want to show you how to cut the inside um, of a piece of furniture. This one was easy because it went all the way around. This one is more difficult. So for this one, what I did was I just bent my picture over like that. I cut out using the scissor. I just cut out the hole in the center, opened it up, put my scissor inside, and then went along the edge on the inside like this until, oops. And you have to hold on tight and have really nimble fingers for this. But it's really good practice for great cutting skills. Until you get right to the edge. When you cut a chair out like this with straight legs, instead of going all the way around with your scissor, what I do is I just cut from the bottom along the straight edge of the chair. Makes it a whole lot easier then you flap your piece up and you just cut it that way instead of going around and around all the edges. 
and cutting that little piece of the background off there. Okay, so you could put a chair like that into your picture as well. Okay, some images will be closer to you. These are smaller images, okay, so you'd have to build this with a little bit of a distance so that it seemed like it was further away with a smaller image. Okay, so I am now going to take my two photo montage elements and I am going to paste them into my picture, which is a bedroom space. Before you do this activity, you may want to spend a day or two just looking for interesting pictures that you can cut out so that when you start working, you have all of your pictures ready to go so that you can make a beautiful composition because looking for the right pictures does sometimes take some time. Right, so there are our photo montage elements in our picture. At the beginning of this exercise, we spoke about the fact that this image is about our thoughts, our memories, our experiences um, of our home. And we have created this image and now we've added some photo montage elements that perhaps remind us of our homes. And now we want to focus a little bit on the element of memory in the picture. And what I've done is I've gone through my old photo albums at home and I have found some interesting photographs of people that are near and dear to me and these are two images of my brother and sister when they were younger and that's an image of myself and my cousin when we were younger and I'd like to add that into um, my picture and I'm going to add them in really as pictures against the wall so they can fit on the wall like photo frames and you can create an interesting photo frame around the actual image, um, like I've done in this picture here. I've actually used the actual photograph in here, so it looks like a frame on the wall. To do that, we want to use some perhaps additional paper or color paper if you have, um, or just some bits of white, it doesn't really matter. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them onto a background like that. just with a little edge showing so that it looks like a frame around my picture. I'm going to take my second picture. And guys, if you don't want to use the actual photograph and cut them up, you can make copies of it. You can either scan it or you can photocopy it. And they become really interesting images to play around with. That's what Ndjeka Crosby does. She takes images and photographs, she copies them, she reproduces them to create her photo transfers. So I'm cutting out my two little pictures so that they look like framed pictures and I'm going to put them up against the wall. Right there, you can use a bit of paint, you can use pencil, whatever you like. So I'm just giving it that three-dimensional effect. You can make it a color if you like. It really is completely up to you. Right, and there are our two pictures, framed pictures, against the wall. So to end our activity for today, guys, we've got two really beautiful images, very different, inspired by the artist in Dujeka, Akunile Crosby. And in the picture that I've just done for you, I haven't added any drawn elements, but you can see from my first picture there, on a separate piece of paper, I drew a door and a table from my home and I cut them out in the same way as what we did the photo montage and we added them into the picture. So you can do the same. You can find little images of bowls or objects, vases or candles that you may want to add into your picture in some way. I have an extra space here. We may have wanted to add a window so that you have a 
view to looking into the outside, maybe onto a garden space or something that you wished you could look out onto from your home, which perhaps you can't see at the moment. What I've also done in this picture, uh, which is a little bit of the way in which Nda Jeka works when she layers her images on top of each other, is that she often uses images of plants as well. She says that she has included in her works images of plants from Nigeria and also from America. And what I did is I drew the outline of our favorite pine tree outside my home and I just added it in as a kind of interesting shadow element. So sometimes you look at an image and it reminds you of something, maybe it looks like a tree or something else. So you can add in those interesting shadow elements over some of the images that you've made in your piece as well. So here is our finished picture and I hope everybody that you've had fun today and that you've enjoyed making this beautiful image of your home and experimenting with the techniques of photomontage and some rubbings and some paint and collage as well. And go and have a look at Ndjeka, some of our other works. She makes really beautiful, beautiful um, artworks and they are incredibly big and they fill huge wall spaces in galleries. Um, and you can see what I've done to my little chair there. I've just added some extra bits of ink and cokey to make those elements stand out. So just to tell you, you can draw over the images and you can make them as interesting as you like. Um, join us again for our next open studio. We have a lovely activity planned with an exciting artist for you to learn about.